Okay, so welcome to an extension of the, the lesson on inverses. Um, a calculator can calculate the inverse of this 3 by 3 matrix uh, relatively simply. But if we wanted to do it by hand, it is a long involved problem. But it is a good review of some augmented matrix skills, so that's why I'd like to show this to you. Thank you very much for watching. Um, ultimately, what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of cancel out this bracket thing, and I'm going to put that line like we would in an augmented matrix. And I'm going to put the 3 by 3 identity elements over here, making one big, long, augmented matrix like this. Now, what we need to do is we need to get all nine of these original elements in our 3 by 3 matrix to transform into the 3 by 3 identity elements, meaning that we need this to be a 1 and a 0 and a 0, and then this to be a 1 and a 0, and this to be a 1, and then this to be a 0 and a 0 and a 0. So basically, whatever math is involved with making that happen to get this to be the 3 by 3 identity, whatever happens over here to this part will become the inverse matrix. Now, sometimes this will get pretty ugly and we'll have some fractions and so on and so forth, but let's just see what we can do. Now, the good news is we already have um, two of the steps done for us. Uh, this is already a one, and this is already a zero. So let's not do anything with that. Our eyes are right now, right here. Oh, let me give you the order that would be helpful. We know that this is a one and a zero and a zero, and this is a zero and a one and a zero, and this is a zero and a zero and a one. We know this, okay? But there's a specific order that it makes sense to go in. We really want this to turn into a one first, and then our second and third steps usually can be done at the same time, but we need these to be zeros. The fourth thing we're going to look at is right here. We need this to turn into a 1, and then below it, this to turn into a 0. And then our sixth thing to change will be this 1. Then we're going to revert or go back here, and we're going to make this our seventh step to get that to be a 0 before we do our final eighth and ninth steps, which, again, can usually be done at the same time to get these zeros. So that's typically the order that we want to go in. So step 1 and step 2 have basically already been finished. Let's go to step three. I need this negative two to turn into a zero. That means that I need to add a positive two so that it becomes a zero. The positive two is going to come from this one. I'm going to temporarily change this one by multiplication to a two. And I'm going to multiply everything in this top row by two temporarily. Okay, so I like to give the steps as to what I'm doing. So row three is ultimately what's changing, and I'm changing it by multiplying two to row one and then adding those elements, those temporary elements, to row three. So row one is not changing yet, row two is not changing. Row 3 is what's changing. So my temporary 2 with this negative 2 becomes 0. This negative 2 with this negative 3 becomes negative 5. This 2 with this 0 becomes 2. This 2 with this 0 becomes 2. 0 and 0 make 0, and 0 and 1 make 1. So there's our first. So we got 1, 0, 0. Our next thing we're looking at is this negative 2. We want this to become a 1. There doesn't seem to be the, the, the easiest way to do that. There's no row swap that could happen. So I think what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to multiply all six of these elements, most of them are zeros, by a negative one-half. That'll work. And I know that that's going to introduce fractions, but that's okay. Row two is going to become negative one-half of row two. That's what I'm going to do. It's okay as long as I multiply all these elements by the same number. That's a legal step. So... Row 1 has not changed. Row 3 has not changed. Row 2 is what's going to change. All of these are going to be multiplied by negative 1 half. So 0 doesn't change. Negative 1 half times negative 2 becomes 1. Negative 1 half times 1 becomes negative 1 half. 0 doesn't change. 1 times negative 1 half, negative 1 half. And the 0 doesn't change. OK. So I've got this 1. Once this is a 1, it's really easy to make this turn into a 0. 
very similar to what we did um, up here in that purple step. I'm going to, and I'm going to work this way, row 3 is what's changing. Since it's a negative 5, I now need a positive 5, so that that becomes a 0. So I'm going to take positive 5 times row 2 and add that to row 3. Okay, so this 1 I'm going to multiply by a positive 5, and I'm going to temporarily put it, I don't know why I did that. Let me go ahead and... Positive 5. Okay, so I'm multiplying everything in here by positive 5. That doesn't change my 0. That does change this to negative 5 halves temporarily. That doesn't change this 0. That changes this to negative 5 halves as well. And that doesn't change this 0. I like to kind of put the temporary numbers there in parentheses so that I can see them. Okay, so top row still is the same. Not changing that one yet. Uh, third row, not changing. Oh wait, no, that is the row that's changing. Excuse me. It's the second. I know that that's changing because I have R three equals. Row two is not changing. Yeah, sure, it's temporarily changing to get row three, but ultimately, permanently, this is not changing. Okay, so row three is what's changing. I'm adding zero plus zero is zero. I'm adding 5 plus negative 5 is 0. I'm adding negative 5 halves plus 2. So this is like negative 2 and a half plus 2 gives me negative 1 half. I've got a 0 plus a 2 is a 2. I've got negative 5 halves plus 0 is negative 5 halves. And I've got 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay. We're having fun. I know it. Okay. So we've got one, zero, zero. We've got one, zero. We're looking here now. We need this to be a one. And what's great about getting these to be zeros first is I can multiply anything to this, and it's not going to change my zeros. Taking negative one half and multiplying by negative two is going to make that turn into a one. Row three is going to multiply by negative two. I like to put the rows that are not changing first. So there's this. Okay, so negative 2 times everything in row 3. So 0 doesn't change, 0 doesn't change. Negative 1 half times negative 2 becomes a 1. Yay! Negative 2 times 2 becomes negative 4. Negative 5 halves times negative 2 becomes positive 5. And 1 times negative 2 becomes negative 2. Since this row is finished, we know that this is the bottom row of our inverse. Very nice. We're not going to touch this. None of this is going to change. It might change temporarily, but we're not changing anything permanently. Okay, so 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now we go up and look at this one. This needs to turn into a 0. And actually, it's almost, it, it's almost a 0. We just need to add 1 to it. And in fact, here's the 1. So that's what we're going to do. Very similar to some other steps that we've done. And do this one in brown. We'll come over here. We're simply going to change row 1, finally. Row 1 is going to change by adding row 2 to it. Row 2 plus row 1. I don't even need any temporary numbers. In fact, the numbers in row 2 are the numbers that I'm going to be using. They're not changing anyway. So I'll put that. Row 3 is definitely not changing since that one's ready to, good to go. I'll put that there. So I'm doing row 2, adding it to row 1 to change the elements in row 1. So 0 plus 1 is still 1. 1 plus negative 1 is my 0, which I wanted. Negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 half plus 0 is negative 1 half. And 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay. We're almost there. We've got two more elements to turn into zeros, and I'm going to do that on the next page. So bear with me, and I'll see you in a minute. I'm going to pause. Okay, that was a quick pause. I just wanted to copy and paste onto another page. So we've got 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then this is a 0. These are the last two elements, and I'm going to do them both at the same time. So row 1 is going to be changing. 
and row two is going to be changing. Very similar steps, that's why I'm going to be doing them at the same time. So row one, this is a positive a half. I need to um, counterbalance that with a negative a half. Okay. Now you might be saying, well, there's a negative a half right underneath it, so why don't we just do that? Well, if we did that and added it to here, yes, that would make this turn into a zero, but think about what would happen from here to here. It would change this zero back to a one, and that would undo some stuff that we've done. So we don't want to do that. We always use the one that we've already created in this column. I'm going to use this one temporarily uh, to change this one half into a zero. I'm going to temporarily multiply it by a negative a half, so it's going to turn into a negative a half. So negative a half times row three and add that to row one. I have to do that to all of these here. The cool thing about that is that the zeros are not going to change. Negative a half times negative four, though, will be a two temporarily. This will become a negative five halves and this will become a one. So these are my temporary numbers. I'm going to go ahead and add those together. Row three is the only one that's not changing at this point since we're changing row two and row one. So I'll put that row three there. Okay, so zero, we're adding to row one, plus one is still a one. Zero plus zero is still a zero. Negative a half plus a half is the zero that we needed. Let's do some more math. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 5 halves plus negative 1 half is negative 6 halves, which reduces to negative 3. And 1 plus 0 is 1. Our final step. We've almost made it. Row 2 is now going to change. I'm finished with these temporary numbers. Now I'm going to use this 1 to counterbalance this negative a half. That needs to be a positive a half added to that. So now everything in the bottom row is going to be multiplied by positive one half. So these will still be zeros. This one will turn temporarily into a one half, positive one half. This will turn into a negative two. Half of this is five halves, and half of negative two is negative one. Okay. So I did positive one half times row three, and I'm adding that to row. Okay, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 half plus negative a half is 0, which is what we needed, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2, 5 halves minus 1 half is 4 halves, which reduces to 2, and negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. Okay, look what we just did. We got all nine of these elements to be the three by three identity, which means that this is the inverse of that original matrix. The original matrix was called matrix A, so therefore I know that the inverse of matrix A is this three by three matrix that we just found. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that that helped you with your augmented matrix skills. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.